Although many people might link the extraordinary changes in weather patterns over the past few decades to climate change, experts disagree and suggest that these changes may not even be related. Australia is one of the major nations situated directly in the path of these unpredictable weather fluctuations. The well-known La Nina winds have significantly impacted the nation, causing significant flooding and cooler summers on the east coast for the past few years. Let's explain the La Nina weather phenomenon to those who may need to become more familiar with it. A natural climatic cycle that blows cool air over the tropical Pacific Ocean is called La Nina. El Nino, which produces substantially warmer winds than La Nina, is the other component of the broader cycle of which it is a part. Sea surface temperatures differ between the two weather events, which alternately affect both ends of the central and eastern tropical Pacific. The El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, refers to meteorological phenomena. La Nina and El Nino working together significantly affect weather patterns shifting the cycle and bringing heavy tropical rains and floods to one area while concurrently bringing the drought to another. Although ENSO has the greatest climatic effects and impacts in the tropical Pacific region, these influences may very well spread to other parts of the world, making ENSO the dominant factor influencing interannual climatic variability worldwide. Southeast Asia, the Western Americas, Australia, and Antarctica are the most affected by ENSO's impacts on precipitation and temperature change. Australia has recently seen more La Nina occurrences than any other place, and a third consecutive La Nina event brought on the most recent flooding. It is extremely unusual to experience three consecutive La Nina events because they typically alternate annually, with warmer El Nino periods coming after a single La Nina. However, other experts and researchers have stated that they are possible and unheard of regardless of how uncommon the three consecutive La Nina events are. Some experts have attributed it to rising surface temperatures, which have varying effects on the frequency and intensity of these climatic events. A series of La Nina occurrences between 1974 and 1976, as well as from 1998 to 2001, has been documented. La Nina is responsible for the country's recent wet and cold weather by bringing colder winds from the eastern and central Pacific, which are moving into some portions of eastern Australia. On the other side, extreme droughts and dry conditions have been brought on by El Nino episodes in the southwest of the United States and Latin America. The National Bureau of Meteorology has stated that this predicted third La Nina event may be weaker and shorter-lived compared to the first two. Although this will be good news regarding heavy rain, it will be bad news for those in East Australia who have only recently recovered from the heavy rains and flooding. The last two La Nina events release intense rainfall, leading to full water catchments and salty soils that need time to dry up. These projections spelled bad news for residents in affected areas in East Australia like Queensland and New South Wales that are still trying to recover from intense floods from the previous season. Still, the main question remains, what have these events got to do with climate change? And do greenhouse gas emissions affect the intensity of ENSO events, if at all? Experts studying the varying effects of ENSO events such as La Nina and El Nino have stated that it's still unclear how these events will be affected as the surface temperature of the planet warps. Still, there has been some evidence that climate change might impact the frequency and duration of these ENSO events. A research paper studying the connections between events like La Nina and regional climates in highly affected Pacific areas like Australia was published earlier this year. The paper detailed how an increase in surface temperatures due to greenhouse gas emissions could intensify the frequency of ENSO effects in most parts of the country and studied the effects of La Nina events in recent years in Australia. Experts found more climatic forces at work determine the intensity and frequency of both rainfall and drought. These two forces in naturally occurring climatic factors include the Southern Annular Mode and Indian Ocean Dipole. An oscillation of variable sea surface temperatures characterizes the Indian Ocean Dipole. The Western Indian Ocean becomes relatively warmer and the Eastern Pole of the Ocean becomes irregularly cooler. This change between warm and cool sea surface temperatures rotates with more rainfall in cooler parts of the ocean and droughts on the warmer end of the ocean. 
In contrast, the southern annular mode is a low-frequency mode in which atmospheric variability causes pressure changes and the movement of powerful, westward-moving winds surrounding Antarctica. These winds are positioned in the lower southern hemisphere and play a huge role in affecting the weather systems and winds in the southern parts of countries like Australia. These two distinct climatic factors in combination with La Nina make a relatively hot and dry Western Australia colder and prime for heavy rains, which is what we've seen these past few years. Three climatic factors have also been prominent in the past. The previously recorded occurrence occurred in the spring of 2010 when Eastern Australia experienced a similarly high rainfall record. Although the 2010 phenomenon was a one-off event, the current trend of El Nino events may induce more rainfall in the coming sea season and trigger more flooding. Although the projections may indicate the likelihood of another La Nina event, it is still uncertain which parts of Australia will be affected. One thing is for certain, the combination of La Nina events, the southern annual mode, and the negative Indian Ocean dipole will most certainly spell unfortunate news for some parts of the country, but the effects of these climatic factors don't mean all bad news for residents of Australia. Droughts will be reduced significantly as climate temperatures cool and rainfall becomes more consistent. Some of Australia's worst droughts on record have been caused by a lack of La Nina and negative Indian Ocean dipole conditions in recent years. With Eastern Australia experiencing two consecutive La Nina events, the region is unlikely to experience severe droughts soon. These cold, wet effects of La Nina on the region also reduce the likelihood of severe bushfires which have plagued many parts of Australia in recent years. Still, Mother Nature will not be denied because although more rain means fewer dry plants for bushfires, it also means more green plants, which will multiply or definitely try out in the future. This could provide more fuel for fires in a distant future once the dry, hot conditions return with a warmer El Nino event. However, one major benefit of La Nina is that the cooler, and wetter conditions it brings normally reduce the global mean temperature by cooling a higher part of the Pacific Ocean, which is one of the hottest regions of sea surface temperatures in the world. But this global cooling effect is generally temporary and continuous greenhouse gas emissions tend to rise the temperature back up, especially when the warmer El Nino event comes into play. Many Australians have been asking if the continuous trend of La Nina events could spill over to a fourth consecutive La Nina. Still, experts believe they have no reason to fear, so this is predicated on the fact that however rare a triple La Nina event is, we've seen it, there has never been a record of a quadruple La Nina event in history. Experts have warned that we must contend with the current La Nina events and mentally prepare for the unlikely scenario that Australia sees yet another season of cold climates and steady rainfall. The effects of ENSO events have been correlated to climate change and the planet's surface temperature rise, but the main concern is how these effects will reflect future changes. But before we conclude on how and when this event will affect global climatic weather conditions in the future, we must consider how these events have unfolded in the past. We must understand whether events are changing in response to greenhouse gas emissions, so let's take a quick look. According to climatology experts, ENSO has changed but also hasn't. This may seem contradictory, but bear with us here. According to expert data, the amplitude of ENSO events, the frequency of each occurrence has increased slightly since the 1950s. This increase slightly contrasts with the recorded ENSO events between 1850 and 1950, and even as far back as the 15th century. A report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, noted in the published report that the increased number and intensity of El Nino events in the last 20 to 30 years might be a result of the increase in temperature level across the Central Pacific. But although the report states a correlation between temperature and fluctuations of ENSO events, it is clearly stated that it does not necessarily mean that human-induced climate change is behind the fluctuation in these events. Scientists could track the occurrence of ENSO events as far back as thousands of years, using the instrumental record and paleoclimatic proxy evidence. These paleoclimatic proxy records are the sources of data that show us the climatic state of the Earth during a particular period in the past. 
These records are obtained by observing the growth and evolutionary traits of ice cores, tree rings, and sediment deposits in lakes and seas. A study of these records indicates that events have fluctuated throughout the last 11,000 years and demonstrated varying amounts of magnitude and amplitude. This tells experts that there is no clear indication that the changes we've seen in ENSO events since the 1950s are peculiar or result from climate change. In addition, the climate model simulations have indicated similar fluctuations in attempts to predict the patterns of ENSO events in the future. These simulations have included and excluded the effects of greenhouse gas emissions, all of which have produced varying results regarding the future state of events on the planet's climate. A detailed study of the recent trends of ANSA events around the Central Pacific has also indicated that any changes in frequency and intensity are within the normal range of natural variability. This might be how the Earth works in unpredictable highs and lows, that might not be directly correlated with the effects of human activities and greenhouse gas emissions. A report by the IPCC does not indicate any consensus regarding the change in sea surface temperatures over the next century about greenhouse gas emissions. But regardless, one thing is for certain. Rainfall variability over the east-central tropical Pacific will likely increase significantly over the next few years. It's also important to make the distinction between climate models. We are not saying there will be no changes in ends or events over the next century. Some models indicate some changes, but the main issue remains that some models do not indicate any change. There is, therefore, no common consensus to display 100% accuracy in future weather patterns or sea surface temperatures and ENSO events are concerned. This concern is also evident in the changing ice patterns and winds that have impacted ice growth in and around Antarctica. Experts have indeed observed that there has been an expansion of the ice sheet on the eastern Antarctic Peninsula since the start of the 21st century. A team of climatologists from the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom and another team from Canterbury University in New Zealand carried out the research. The floating ice sheets on the eastern and battered peninsula have increased dramatically between 2000 and 2019, according to evidence gathered by both teams. For a more accurate computation and comprehension of the precise expansion of ice conditions around Antarctica, they use atmospheric and oceanic data, satellite imagery, and observations going back as long as 60 years. The investigation mainly focused on a 1,410-kilometer long section of ice. The ice shelf surrounding Antarctica increased by at least 85% during the early 2000s, according to both records. The crew went on a trip to the frozen continent in 2019 when they discovered that the ice sheets close to the coast have dramatically advanced since satellite records first started keeping track of them in the early 1960s. The ice sheets surrounding Antarctica are expanding this late in the 21st century. This is widely unexpected given the ice melting patterns observed at the North Pole and other polar regions. This has increased a number of contradicting findings, with some experts predicting a large ice loss from the polar ice caps. Others suggest that as the century progresses, there may be very well be a considerable gain in ice. The extraordinarily complex dance between sea surface temperatures and the atmosphere that results in ENSO occurrences, which have a huge impact on global weather patterns, is one clear thing. For example, a single light bulb in a room controls several switches that collectively reflect maritime wind, sea surface, temperatures, greenhouse gas emissions, and other climatic elements, providing a straightforward explanation for how complex ENSO phenomena are. It isn't easy to pinpoint which of these variables affects ENSO occurrences differently, if at all. Additionally, it is difficult to identify a precise pattern given the long-term consequences of ENSO episodes over the past 1,000 years. However, there is still work being done that could provide conclusive insight into how climate change might develop over the next century. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Share all of your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.